now I heard that the next uh, we can listen to Dan Pierre via the connection. Please go ahead. So thank you for, uh, so much uh, for the opportunity to be here. And I'm going to tell you a, a story that started a few years ago when we were challenged by Kathy, Kathleen Carrico, now a Nobel Prize winner, on the idea of creating an mRNA vaccine to bacteria. Next slide. So you can see the gold rush for mRNA vaccines from almost zero into the last years that we have more and more attempts, mostly against viral pathogens and cancer and very limited data on this platform applicability against bacteria. And since we are living in the world of antibiotic resistance, uh, we think this necessitates alternative uh, countermeasures. Next slide. So basically, it all started as a crazy idea when uh, I was communicating with Kathleen uh, Carico, with Kathy, about this. Next slide. And basically asked, can we do bacterial mRNA vaccines? And her answer was probably not. And the reason that she thought it will not work is because bacteria brings their own proteins and they know how to better hide themselves from the immune system. For example, you know that aggressive streptococci A surround themselves with hyaluronic acid and M proteins and for a few weeks cannot recognize by the immune system. And they have other approaches to evade from the immune system. Next slide. So we basically accepted this challenge and said, oh, it's going to be easy because we are delivery expert and we're the first to show that we can deliver mRNA in an animal in a cell-specific manner. Therefore, it should be straightforward for us. And together with my team, and you can see here a team of ladies that Kathy said this is the girl power, very inspiring. We will do that. Next slide. So we decided to tackle one of the most aggressive type of bacteria, which also has form of antibiotic resistance, is the Hirsenia pestis. It's a gram-negative bacterium that is the etiological agent of the plague. It's highly infectious and lethal. There have been millions of deaths around history and several hundreds annually. It's also a potential bioweapon. It's a T1 agent. There is no approved vaccine. It could be treated by antibiotics, but there are also strains that are very resistant. And this bacteria cause three types of plague, uh, a septicemic, a bubonic one, a pneumonic. One bacteria in the most aggressive form can kill one person. So don't try this at home. Next slide. So this is uh, a picture that was drawn by Nicolas Pousson, and it's uh, posted in the Louvre in Paris, and basically gives you a little bit of history of the different types of plague. The most known one is the Black Death uh, that occurred in 20 years between 1330 to 1350, and is responsible of basically eliminated 51% of the world's population back then. Next slide. We still have Black Death today, and there's still countries around the world that are, uh, as you can see here uh, in red uh, or in orange, that still exist, and also in other countries as well. Next slide. So we decided that delivery is easy for us, and therefore we design an antigen and create an mRNA based on this. We chose the F1. It's basically a chaperone on the uh, bacteria, and this basically provides us uh, a potential protection. Next slide. And so we designed this mRNA 
uh, with a signal peptide and a poly A, and it seems to be very classical and very simple. Next slide. Using our, one of our lipids uh, that uh, uh, we generated in our lab, and we have a very, very large ionizable lipid library, more than 6,000 different molecules. Some of them are in clinical testing right now as we speak. So we use the microfluidic system and basically uh, created a stable formulation. Next slide. We also show that in vitro, in HeLa cells, this F1 is being expressed and expressed well. Next slide. So we injected this F1, five microgram of mRNA in LNPs, prime and two boost, and then wanted to see what's going on. Next slide. Surprisingly, this led to cellular response, interferon response, but we did not see a homoral immunity. Therefore, Kati Kariko was correct. You cannot generate antibodies with this naive F1 sequence. Animals were not challenged because of this. Next slide. So we decided to improve the immunogenicity of the LNP mRNA vaccine, and there are a few ways to do that. One of them is to use a GC-rich uh, domains. So when we have done this, and this is the scheme behind this, next slide, we have start seeing some titers of antibodies. Next slide. If we did a challenge trial with the pestis, we saw 50% of uh, basically effective uh, protection, but 50% is not good enough. Next slide. So then we tackled it a little bit different. We removed the single peptide and we also included an FC, human FC portion of this. It is known that human FC, and we and others have shown this during COVID, increase the time in the circulation and basically create those uh, sequences and basically proteins more immunogenic. Next slide. When we tested those, we have found that these guys produce a lot of antibodies. Next slide. Here you can see a demonstration of 100% protection based on a single prime and two boost. So it leads to a full protection. Both the uh, signal peptide uh, deletion and the one that have a signal peptide but with a human FC addition. Next slide. Then we got greedy we decided to see if by a single dose of priming, we will get protection. So we prime the mice with five microgram mRNA LNP, and we challenge them with pestis two weeks later. And I want to tell you not to do it at home. We had a collaboration with the Israeli Institute of Biological Research. They have special BL4 labs. This is something you cannot do in a regular academic institution. And uh, these are the results. Next slide. First, after the first and second and third bleeding, we saw a very high titer of antibody, which probably leads to high protection. Next slide. Okay, and next slide. And this is what we got. So, you have antibody titers that cor correlate well with the likelihood of survival. And we got full protection after a single dose of the Delta uh, single peptide. And for us, that was very nice. And of course, for the one that have a human FC as well. Next slide. So just to summarize, this basically means that Delivery is very important, but also the mRNA. So you need to optimize your mRNA payload 
and it's crucial for the successful design of potent mRNA. I haven't mentioned this, but we have tried different types of lipid. None of them could induce a better immunogenicity. In that case, we created a vaccine against Isrenia pestis, and in particular, this is one of the most interesting and dangerous uh, bacteria. We also show for the first time that one can utilize an mRNA LNP platform against bacteria. And it opens up new opportunities in general, even for a single dose. Just imagine that we can now potentially vaccinate patients that are getting into hospitals. In hospitals, we have a lot, a lot of antibiotic resistant bacteria around, mainly in the airway area. And so if we will be able to vaccinate people that have un uh, potential issues with their immune system, and within three days they will generate antibodies, they will be protected according to their, in their um, hospitals. Next slide. So I just wanna thank all the people that were behind us. Predominantly, this is the work of uh, Dr. Ido Kohn, Dr. Inon Levy, and soon to become a Dr. Uri Ilya. And basically uh, for us, this really opens up a lot of other opportunities. And I wanna thank my team. I wanna thank the companies that works with us and the spin-off companies that are now in different stages of clinical testing of some of our lipids and our strategies in different areas from cancer genome editing to vaccines and different types of vaccines. And next slide. We are always interested in more people. Probably it's not the best time to tell you because we have a war around us. Although in Tel Aviv is less of an issue, but still we are uh, under attack now. So I would say that hopefully next year we will be able to come and present more data. Thank you for listening, and I will be happy to answer any questions. Thank you.